Okay, so today I want to start talking about continuous random variables. Up to now, we've concentrated on random variables that had range, which were either a discrete set of points or, at most, a countable set of points. Like the geometric distribution took on a countable number of values. Now, what I want to start talking about today are random variables that can take a continuous number of values, so an uncountable number of values. And things become a little more complicated, but we've already seen one example of this. We've talked about the normal distribution. So when we've said that, um, that a sum of independent random variables, let's say the xi, xi or i, i, d, we've set, seen that this sum, i equals 1 to n, let's call sn, we've seen that sn minus mu times the expected value of one of the, that this, or that this converges, and if we normalize it by um, the standard deviation, so square root of n times the standard deviation of xi, we've seen that this probability, the probability that this is in between a and b, was well approximated by the integral from a to b of the standard normal distribution function, little phi, which is written as 1 over square root of 2 pi e to the minus z squared over 2. Well, this idea in general of specifying a distribution as an integral over a function is how we, in general, will define continuous random variables. So a continuous random variable x is specified by its probability density function. And in general, we'll write this as P D L. And the idea is that if x is one of these continuous random variables, then the probability that x is in some interval, let's say, a, b, is just the integral from a to b of the probability density function. Let's just call it f of x dx, where this is the pdf of x. Okay? So, in a way, what this is really saying, this statement above here, is really a statement that the random variable sn minus mu, uh, oops, uh, it's a type of right? n, n times expected value of, one, of x1 over square root of n s d x1. It says that this random variable here is approximated well by a new random variable z, where z has p d f phi. And in general, we'll just say that z is distributed normal 0, 1, which means that it has this PDF. Right, let's see a little bit more here. So when we write the probability, so we can't actually write the probability of x equaling the x. That now is equal to 0, because think about it. If I took if this is a continuous random variable. So if I have the probability that x is in between a little a and a plus delta, this probability is given by the integral from a to a plus delta of f of x dx. If again, f is the pdf of the random variable x. And this is very close to, so if delta is small, this is very close to f of a times delta, right? That's just a delta is very small. This integral, what you're doing is you have some PDF. Here we are at a. Here we are at a plus delta. And we're giving the area here. 
that's what we're calculating, but this is very small, we might as well just give this rectangular angle. Right? It's a very good approximation. And you see that as delta goes to zero, this goes to zero as delta goes to zero. Okay? And so in other words, the probability of any given point is x, so instead what we'll talk about is we'll say we'll have notation for the probability that a random variable is in a little dx. It's really the statement that x is in the interval x, x plus dx, or sometimes we'll actually say it's in the interval x minus dx to x, or sometimes you can go half in either direction, but that doesn't matter, and that's approximately the integral from, well that's exactly, sorry, the integral from x to x plus, it should be little x's, little x, little x plus dx of f of x, and let's use a different random variable, z, dz, well, it's uh, z, dz, and that's, of course, approximately equal to f evaluated x times dx. And, of course, all this should be taken with a grain of salt, because what do I really mean when I write dx? What I really mean is an arbitrarily small delta. So I'm really saying that I've made this thing super small right around a point, and I'm just giving you that value, the value of the density there, and then to turn it into an area, I multiply by the width of the base, which is dx. Okay? And just like before, we can re-talk about everything we've already talked about, such as expectation, variances, none of these changes. The only thing we have to do is change what we mean by expected value. So. For instance, the expected value, so if x is a random variable with pdf f of x, then the expected value of x is the integral over the entire range, so let's just go ahead and say for infinity to minus infinity, of f of little x um, times x dx. And in general, the expected value of some function of the random variable will be the integral from this infinity to infinity, g of little x, f of x. And this should be compared with if x is has range, a discrete range, x1, x2, up to xn, let's say, then the expected value of g of x was the sum over little x in the range of x, g of little x times the probability density, the probability mass function, which we have been mainly writing as the probability that x is equal to little x. But this is really the same thing, because this, here we have the function, and here we have the probability of it being, this is the probability that x is in dx which as we just talked about is, approximate, is, is when dx is infinitesimally small, is equal to dx. So that's how you, the sum turns into an integral. And it's exactly the same procedure as doing kind of Riemann approximation when you learn how to define the Riemann integral. So here we have the expected value. And then, of course, once we have the expected value, the definition of variance, the definition of first and second moments follows in exactly the same way. All right, one last thing to say. Just as an example, of course, you know, we can do all the things we've already done. So if, if z is distributed normal 0, 1, that is to say the probability that z is in some set A is the integral over the set A of phi of y, y is just a dummy integration variable. Okay, so this is an interval, this is just the integral over an interval. Now if I let x equal some number mu plus sigma times z, then I claim that x is distributed normal mu sigma, and we'll see how to do this later, we'll see how to do this soon enough, and now the pdf of x is um, phi mu sigma of y, which is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi, and then outside the square root, the sigma, e to the minus y minus mu quantity squared over 2 uh, sigma squared. Okay? 
So this is the PDF of a normal func of a normal random variable whose mean is mu and variance is sigma. So now, in general, when we talk about a random variable, which is a sum of a bunch of iid random variables, so if, if again s n is equal to x one to x n, where this is where the x i are i i d with expected value of x i equal to mu and standard deviation and standard deviation of x i equal to sigma then we just can say that s n is approximately is approximately normal mu uh, n times mu comma square root of n times sigma so any question about the probabilities of this random variable can be well approximated by just asking the same question for this random variable, which is what we've been doing all along when we've been applying the central limit.